Hello guys and welcome! I hope that you're doing well. My name is UGD King or I play 4K, AK, I play 8K, AK, I play 16K and during this video I'm going to demonstrate Batman Arkham Knight PC game running in 4K UGD video resolution with Intel i9 9900K overclock at 5.1 gigahertz with only 8 physical cores, 8 physical threads so pretty much it's like i7 9000 series CPU hyper trading technology is disabled to be able to use maximum uh, physical cores however the i9 9900K has more uh, CPU cache versus the i7 so it can boost up a little bit keep that in mind to be able to overclock to 5.1 gigahertz and Nvidia Titan RTX video card equipped with 24 gigabyte of video RAM as a flagship of Nvidia Turing GP architecture video cards gaming gamers video cards the, uh, both uh, parts i9-9900K and Titan RTX video card were released in 2018 and this is my PC built from 2018 called Marazilla PC version 5.3 I'm about to retire this system this system was top end system all the way till 2021 before they released the uh, RTX 3090 video card which is the NVIDIA Ampere GPU architecture, which is the next GPU architecture after the NVIDIA Turing GPU architecture that I'm using today, NVIDIA Turing GPU architecture. And it's going to be nice to see because Batman Arkham Knight is the latest Batman game, the most beautiful Batman game uh, for the PC games or console games that was released. Okay, so uh, today is... Um, December 30th, 2023. Happy Merry Christmas, by the way. And uh, hopefully your Christmas was all right. And we are about to celebrate Happy New Year 2024. But before doing that, I decided to get and wrap it up with my Marazilla PC version 5.3 system. And record and... Uh, wrap up with all the videos all the famous games 4k 8k and 16k uhd video resolution on a single titan rtx video card and two titan rtx video cards in two-way sli by nvidia okay uh, this is going to be a single titan rtx installed in the system as you can see system is exactly as in the wallpaper right here this is my system, single Titan RTX dual fan design, Founders Edition. Uh, the CPU is water cooled by the Corsair H150i Pro that is equipped with 360mm radiator and three fans, stock fans. Okay. Uh, the CPU is on the liquid metal thermal compound paste by Thermal Grizzly. Okay. I'm about to overclock the Titan RTX, but before I'm going to do it, let me zoom in a little bit. For those folks that watching this on the tablets and phones and show you the stats so single um cpu overclock to 5.1 gigahertz with eight physical cores eight physical threads without the hyper trading technology hyper trading technology is disabled 7.2 x 7.3 x not bad uh, 4424 as a multi-thread score under cpu z and single thread score that is crucial when we're talking PC gaming in 2023, 2024, or 2025, 613, okay? This is the CPU, 51 multiplier as external frequency, 51 multiplier as AVX2 instruction frequency, so it will never go down below 5100 megahertz, maybe by a couple megahertz down, but that's all. 8 physical core, 8 physical threads. So level toward cache, 16 megabytes, guys, and... Um, this is much higher than on the i7-9000 series, 9700K. So, we still have advantage with i9-9900K even when we disabled the hyper trading technology and kind of emulating the i7-9700K. But level 3 crash is still 
much higher and uh, level tar cache helps a lot because this is the communication with the CPU before the system RAM keep that in mind ASUS Z390 chipset Maximus Hero 11 motherboard however Titan RTX running PCI Express 3.0 but it X 8 lanes instead of 16 lanes I couldn't figure out how to do 16 lanes motherboard says it's capable while single card installed without M.2 slot SSD um, 16x but it's impossible I had the same issue with the Z370 I also use on the Z390 RTX 2080 Ti video card I also had two RTX 2080 Ti in SLI as well as two Titan RTX in SLI and it doesn't work guys when single card is installed only it's 8x anyways on Z390 or Z370 and Asus Maximus here this was case for me DDR4 1600 megahertz times 2 3200 megahertz, megahertz as external frequency not CL18 CL16 not even CL14 not even CL12 CL11 the low value is better and short the latency delay between the in nanoseconds between the communication with the system RAM DDR4 and the CPU which is the processor 1T command so the latency below 45 nanoseconds this is the world's record for the DDR4 especially when we're talking Intel 9 series CPUs Intel 9000 CPUs that was released in 2018 keep that in mind so 4 sticks system RAM 8 gigabytes each, 32 gigabytes total. Uh, dual channel 128 bit supported by the motherboard, but four sticks great for the quad channel 256 bit, but not supported by the Asus Maximus 11 here. Motherboard Z390 chipset, Z390 chipset doesn't support quad channel, there is none of them uh, that was available to public. And but when you're running four sticks, same sticks. Even the cheapest DDR4, they're going to demonstrate the maximum possible bandwidth. And bandwidth 43, 42,000 megabytes read, write, and copy for the i9-9900K. But just because it's overclocked and I pushed up my DDR4 further, uh, reduced the latency delay, the we received the more bandwidth. Okay. Uh, this DDR was the Corsair DDR4 5000 MHz CL18, but unstable on this motherboard. Z390 chipset, Asus Maximus 11 here. The reason why I believe because this is the Micron Technology chips and uh, maximum frequency stable 3800 MHz. After that, it's not booting. No matter what kind of CL you're putting, even CL18, it's not booting above 3800 MHz. Keep that in mind. Uh, the reason why I believe because the micro technology chips, micro technology chips hates the high frequency but loves the low latency exactly as they utilize it. As you can see, CL11. But Samsung B chips, when it comes to DDR4, loves the high frequency but hates frequency. But uh, I mean, love the high frequency but hates latency. So it's kind of opposite, different technologies of the DDR4, Micron and Samsung B. Hopefully, guys, this makes sense. I'm about to overclock the Titan RTX. So single Titan RTX is installed. Let me go ahead and overclock it. It has 64 GP, GPU benchmark, G, GPU TU102 by NVIDIA, which is the flagship of the NVIDIA Turing GPU architecture. Compare it with the Intel Coffee Lake S, which is the i9-9900K, okay, in some tests. Let's go ahead and overclock the Titan RTX. When I'm going to overclock the Titan RTX, keep in mind that my pixel fill rate will increase by about 7 gigapixels per second through the GPU overclock. Textual fill rate will increase by about 30 gigapixels per second through the uh, GPU overclock. And bandwidth will increase by additional 120 gigabytes per second. Not 120 gigabits per second. 120 gigabytes per second. Gigabits, you got to multiply it by 8 much higher value and 120 gigabytes per second through the free overclock is still unbelievable and amazing as you can see i'm using the windows magnifier zoom tool under windows 10 professional operating system while I'll zoom in into my 4k hd 200 percent almost everything is so pixelated go ahead and check out when i'm going to zoom in 1000 percent to 16k hd video resolution desktop and still everything will be looking just like this unbelievable so sharp 
Uh, anyways, uh, so this value will be increasing, so I'm going to overclock to the software, home safe environment safe, but as again, if you're going to overclock any PC hardware components or parts, you're doing it on your own risk and expenses, nobody going to compensate you for anything. I'm going to have an excellent tutorial how to overclock the Titan RTX or NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti video card over the UHDKing.com. Go ahead and check it out. It's going to be the best video tutorial as well as I'm going to have the best video tutorial how to overclock Intel i9-9900K that is not going to look like one of those copycats copying each other. It's going to be the best uh, Intel i9-9900K CPU overclocking tutorial as again over the UHDKing.com as well as how to overclock this very weird Corsair 5000 MHz CL18 Micron DDR4 and created 3200 MHz CL11. Trust me, there is a lot of work behind it and I'm going to cover it that you don't want to miss if you building the i9-9900K or i9000 uh, series CPU or 8000 series CPU systems with this DDR4. This DDR4, by the way, was $1,000 per 16 gigabytes for two sticks of eight gigabytes all the way back in 2019. Uh, very rare, but right now you can get it cheap. And uh, yeah, it's a great memory, especially if you're gonna run it just like I do, all right? Which is the cl 11 one t command. Anyways, with the latency below 45 nanoseconds for its record. Anyways, as you can see, we increase pixel fill rate, textual fill rate, uh, bandwidth, introduction, Good enough, let's go ahead and jump into a uh, Steam. I have the license game under the Steam. And uh, let's do the benchmark. I'm gonna show all the visual presets. Keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and have a look, guys. I also covered on a single Titan RTX in 8K UHD video resolution over the UHD King. Hopefully I'm going to cover the same deal with the two Titan RTX video cards in two-way SLI by NVIDIA. The data at the left top corner verified every single data guys and correct so you can trust that. I'm going to start with the uh, maximum visual preset. Which will be um, like this, including the anti-aliasing. Motion blur will be off. I don't need. I I don't like the motion blur. I like nice crystal clear pixels. Um, even the Nvidia GameWorks settings will be on every single setting. So this is maximum possible visual preset. Max FPS at 90, but when VSync is not on, it's not going to be capped at 90. It it can go way above 90. You're gonna see it, guys. All right. So full screen. 4K HD, let's go ahead and have a look. The game, Batman Arkham Knight has pre-built benchmark called PC Performance Test. Uh, if you're running an Origin client or on a Steam client or on a DVD, it has that. So go ahead and execute that and let's go ahead and do it, guys. That's the, the beautiful, the most amazing Batman game so far in 2023 and it's beautiful, guys. Okay, so while I'm running the NVIDIA Shadow Play, the game is crashing, okay? And, uh, the game is crashing while I'm running the NVIDIA Shadow Play, please keep that in mind. It's just crashing and uh, while I'm running the game works. It just doesn't like the game works. Without NVIDIA Shadow Play, it's not crashing. So this is the error right here. Let me show it to you for those who's curious, for those people who's modding. I showed you that. Okay. So impossible. That's why why. When I demonstrated 8K HD and Titan RTX, it did the same deal. It didn't do that on the RTX 2080 Ti, but back in 2018. Keep that in mind. With this NVIDIA driver, it does it. It doesn't like the game works while running NVIDIA Shadow Play somehow. So, GameWorks is not going to be enabled, but 
the FPS, the difference will be like 3 FPS difference when it comes to Titan RTX. It's almost the same FPS, but it's beautiful visuals. It's like the smoke can go around the 3D models when the enemy is walking or you walking around you. So volumetric, it's beautiful. But unfortunately, while you're recording with NVIDIA Shadow Play, which is my favorite video capture in real time on the same computer with only 3 FPS down while doing that it's unbelievable software that utilizing the hardware and software capabilities on in, in NVIDIA and NVIDIA doesn't want to share with us exactly how to do it but there is no other companies in the world in 2023 and even in 2024 that can capture the your desktop screen especially PC games while only uh, losing 3 FPS in the process in terms of the performance. Uh, this is just unbelievable, guys. NVIDIA Shadow Play is leading. Trust me, because I opened this YouTube channel, I developed the Ultimate Video Capture, then renamed it to Morose Video Capture, all the way till 4K video resolution was introduced with NVIDIA Shadow Play and through the free software, and I realized that software doing unbelievable job. It does it, like there is no OBS, no software on the planet Earth can beat up NVIDIA Shadow Play in terms of the performance capturing in real time, smoothness on the same computer while losing just three F two, three FPS of the performance while playing your favorite games this is just and recording in 4k hd or even 8k hd with nvidia shadow play this is just unbelievable guys anyways so what we're gonna do we're gonna uh, remove the game work settings but it's beautiful guys with the game work settings is beautiful but as again performance loss will be like 3 fps not that big uh, the game is asking us to reboot it as you can see we're gonna reboot it so you can minus 3 fps to get the uh, performance while running the game works but game works looks much beautiful than without it in this particular game it's just before uh, this game is not featuring the real-time retracing it's not featuring the rtx but it's featuring the nvidia uh, technologies such as the uh, physics acceleration physics uh, through the cuda course like there is no other games capable to do that it's just unbelievable keep that man anyways titan rtx completely overclocked to the maximum possible potential 4k hd or even 8k hd video resolution in batman arkham knight is possible even with the rtx 2080 ti video card that is only equipped with 11 gigabyte of video ram as as again as a reminder titan rtx is equipped with 24 gigabyte of video ram gdr6 same gdr6 on the rtx 2080 ti but only 11 gigabytes but in this particular game you can play all the way uh in 8k hd with the rtx 2080 Ti video card without any issues. Keep that in mind. Alright, so you saw it, guys. I rebooted to clean garbage collector for system RAM and video RAM so you can see the right data at the left top corner. So, maximum possible visuals except the NVIDIA game works is off. Everything is off. So, PC performance test. This is the benchmark built in. Let's go ahead and have a look. Guys, I'm not trying to talk a lot, I'm trying to provide a lot of information because not a lot of people benchmark Titan RTX video card because Titan RTX video card in 2018 was the most expensive video card that cost 2500 United States dollars 2500 United States dollars and it was like unbelievable video card dream for a lot of gamers the RTX 2080 Ti was half of that price was like 1200 1000 dollars keep that in mind and the performance boost on Titan RTX is only 10% higher then RTX 2080 Ti do that Titan RTX featuring 256 CUDA core more than RTX 2080 Ti keep that in mind but it was a special versions of the RTX 2080 Ti that was featuring the same CUDA cores as Titan RTX the same amount that was 4608 CUDA cores same as Titan RTX it was a special versions of the RTX 2080 Ti video cards that was released in the end uh, before the um, 
NVIDIA Ampere GPU architecture was released, such as RTX 30 series video cards. As again, for those who are curious, the Titan RTX is a flagship of the RTX 20 series video cards and a little bit faster than RTX 2080 Ti video card, keep that in mind. And featuring more double of video RAM that is capable to push further, of course, and will last much longer than RTX 2080 Ti. It's enough even in 2024 for AKHD 24 gigabyte of video RAM. While RTX 2080 Ti video card with the 11 gigabyte of video RAM will be only enough for the 4K HD in 2024. Keep that in mind. All right, minimum FPS 97, maximum FPS 166, average FPS 122. That's a great average FPS. Uh, the my uh, stats show 99 average FPS, but look like benchmark is 122. Not bad, not bad. I think I, I picked up the average FPS from the menu a little bit, and benchmark pick up exactly the benchmark. All right, I'm gonna reset the average FPS when the benchmark will start, just to make sure that I'm precise as well. All right, that's a great score, guys. That's a way above 60 fps way above 90 fps that's a great and great utilization as you saw all right and this is including with anti-aliasing let's go ahead and remove the anti-aliasing but even the anti-aliasing method on the nvidia Turing gp architecture is not a biggie you're gonna find out it's not like 30 or 40 percent performance loss like it was on titan x maxwell gp architecture pascal gp architecture on titan xps fixed that almost but Titan Turing, such as Titan RTX video card, is fixed completely. It's only like 10% loss, which is unbelievable. And I believe the NVIDIA Ampere GPU architecture or NVIDIA EDA GPU architecture is not even going to he feel the anti-aliasing methods at all. So it will be related only to the CPU. But, all right, so I, I switched that. Anti-aliasing is off. Let's reboot this system just to see the correct video RAM and everything and system RAM just to make sure that we got everything correct as again the Batman Arkham Knight is ready all the way to 16k HD guys and Titan RTX can render it in real time of course the FPS is not playable on a single Titan RTX video card but it's nice to see how the technology from 2018 can handle that that's unbelievable and I'm going to demonstrate it over the hdking.com or over the 15,360 times 8,640.com go ahead and check it out or I play 16k.com for those who's curious and in the future this is the first generation of the video cards that is capable to run 16k HD video resolution in Batman Arkham Knight but it's nice to see in the future which video card will deliver 60 FPS and I believe 60 FPS will be delivered with the RTX 5090 Ti video card but I could be wrong Nvidia Blackwell GPU architecture that will be released to the gamers in 2024 all right, so um, for those who's curious, as again, anti-aliasing is off, game work savings is off, but everything else at the maximum possible visuals. Let's go ahead and have a look. I'm just curious, what is the actual cap for the Batman Arkham Knight? In terms of the FPS, is it 1000 FPS? If it's 1000 FPS, then we will be testing the 4K HD in the f within the future systems, PC systems, and even mobile devices a lot. And I'm going to use this uh, PC game, guys, Batman Arkham Knight PC game in the future benchmarks because it has the benchmark built in and it's very handy and useful. It's nice when game developers including the benchmarks. That's a proper way of developing games. All right, so mm -hmm. it's almost over, but the FPS is crazy, 
and this is maximum visuals and the game looks amazing in 4k hd please watch this video in 4k hd for the maximum visual experience switch it in your youtube player to 4k or to 2160p on the vi visual settings of your video player of youtube for the best possible visual experience because 1080p is not going to capture this level of details and uh, fidelity it's unbelievable guys beautiful visuals this time I reset the average FPS so we're supposed to capture the correct average FPS hopefully almost almost uh, so uh, minimum FPS 100 which is unbelievable 4k hd without the anti-aliasing which you don't need too much of the anti-aliasing in this particular game batman arkham knight while running 4k hd video resolution at 1080p you're gonna see and you will be needing anti-aliasing method but 4k hd is great especially and at 8k hd it's just amazing the need to have any anti-aliasing anyways anti-aliasing not the biggest as you can see minimum fps 100 maximum fps 171 Average FPS 125, and my settings almost showing the same average FPS. It's a little bit went down. It was like 120, and then it went down. It looked like it's getting down because right now it's stuck at 90 FPS because the GPU utilization right now is it's at 60 percent because it's capping right now at 90 FPS when you're not running benchmark when you're not running the uh, when it's kind of idling let's say it like that so that's why my FPS went down from 120 to 100 as average hopefully you guys understand but it's showing the correct FPS even my stats it's just raining down because it's right now it's kept at 90 FPS but it's kind of idling keep that in mind that's a great 120 FPS average that's a great let's go ahead and have a look at the minimum and I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up so Completely minimum visual preset for those who's curious is going to be for the CPU test as well to see If we bottleneck through the CPU or not So completely minimum visual preset This is an extra benchmark uh, So don't forget to smash that like button a lot of people was asking me to do that and I'm gonna go ahead and do it Just as minimum minimum visual preset so it's going to underline the CPU utilization and how CPU is related. Let's go ahead and have a look. I probably... Let's see what's going on there. Okay. It's gonna run so fast, I already can predict. But let's see if the GPU utilization will be below 90%. That's a heavy CPU bottleneck, keep that in mind. But let's go ahead and have a look. So, lowest possible visual preset. All right, we booted to clean the system RAM and video RAM garbage collector, the data that is not used. It's not going to allocate it in video RAM or system RAM because we just rebooted the game, refresh the game engine. Ah, that that's going to be crazy, guys. Yeah, the GPU utilization is still above ninety, so we almost don't have a CPU bottleneck, but just a little bit I believe we still have CPU bottleneck if I would be overclocking to 5.3 gigahertz while running six core six threads without the hyper trading and two physical cores disabled in the bias I believe that the GPU utilization would be here like 99 98 but it's not 97 even as you can see so it, it is still a little bit of the CPU bottleneck while running 4K HD, that means that it's going to be a heavy CPU bottleneck at 1080p for sure. So the faster CPU with a much higher frequency per clock will demonstrate higher instruction per clock. Keep that in mind. 
an overall CPU or the same frequency but the newer generation of the CPU such as 12900K will demonstrate at least 10% higher instruction per clock even with the same frequency and I believe it will reduce the CPU bottleneck to none or at least Intel 13 series CPUs or Intel 14 series CPUs which is the same deal will pretty sure show no CPU bottleneck here and additional will boost up to 20% of the instruction per clock on the overall CPU when compared to my Intel i9 9900K which is Intel 9 series CPUs. Okay, minimum 112 FPS, maximum 178, average 133. So average did not um, improve by a lot as you can see. The reason why, because most likely we bottleneck through our CPU, okay? But as again, in this particular game, when minimal, uh, minimal visual preset versus maximum visual preset, not such a big in terms of the performance, not even 50% difference, so, for this particular game. So, but with the much newer GPU, uh, much newer CPU architecture, we can squeeze a little bit higher FPS out of this NVIDIA Titan RTX video card that based on the NVIDIA TU-102 GPU as a flagship of the NVIDIA RTX 20 series video card. Skip that one. Alright, so everything was uh, pretty much mentioned and uh, covered. Guys, don't forget to smash that like button. Thank you so much for watching. Um, a lot of time, money, energy is invested. Uh, in the video comments, I'm going to put the related videos. Go ahead and check it out. Share it with your friends. Subscribe for more great and unique videos. And Happy New Year 2024. And I will see you guys in 2024. Hopefully on Marazilla PC version 6 with the newer CPU and uh, at least NVIDIA EDA GPU architecture such as RTX 40 series video cards, hopefully RTX uh, 4090 or maybe RTX 4090 Ti video card if NVIDIA is going to release it in the beginning of 2024 in March RTX 4090 Ti video card even before the March like in February if not, then, um, or maybe with the RTX uh, 5090 video card, NVIDIA Blackwell, or RTX 5 5090 Ti video card, who knows. But, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Till the next time.